We are the morning animals in Zynga, Spinozzi, Curtis Fitzpatrick, and Carrie Murdoch. It is Friday, June 10th, and we have a very special guest in studio. And I, and I think, Curtis, you should be the one to intro this special guest. Why would I want to do that? Okay, then don't. I don't care. I mean, he's your brother. He is my brother. <laughs> yes, my brother, Chris, Christopher. I don't know what your proper name is. Christopher. Christopher. I give a name. Fitzpatrick also has... The same last name, and yeah. he is in town for a very special event. <laughs> it's excellent the that Dead you pointed Center that Film out. Festival. The confusion so was so awkward crazy. right now. The it fact is. that you don't know his first name but are are pretty familiar with his last name is interesting to me. I, okay, that's my fault more than anything. You, you know, say hi, say hi to Carrie. Carrie's not here, but he's here. Carrie, how you doing? I'm doing well, Christopher. Uh, I it is weird that Curtis is so. Um, weird right now and you are uh, not afraid to shave body hair in his hotel room so <laughs> okay. oh that was a discussion from a long time ago you Still shaved means. yourself in their hotel room well, he has to shear himself so every so yes. often yes uh, you're remembering conversations has, carrie that took no. place like nine years ago <laughs> I think that was, that was before Big this show was even together. Days. It was Big Twelve, was Media, Big 12 Day. Media Day. We yeah. talked about that. No, I remember this. Yeah, uh, I don't think I don't know if there was any shaving going on. I just remember I had to take a shower, and that was. I, no, let me say this. Okay, uh, here we go. Look, Curtis is. We all know that he is emotionless. He won't post pictures of himself uh, <laughs> online. He's just uh, weird about being public. But I have never seen Curtis beam so brightly about his uh, someone that he's related to. As he has to you, Christopher, over the last six months over this this Oklahoma breakdown documentary, uh, I it's it's probably strange for you, but your brother has been so proud of you throughout this process. It's been it's been one of the only times we can say Curtis has been kind of endearing. Yeah, he uh, he actually said that this is the greatest thing anyone in our family has ever done. Sorry, Shmila. And, and his kids were sitting right there. <laughs> yeah. I have posted more about him than you have in about your own children. Ten years than my own family. He yes, actually Facebooked, and he refuses to Facebook, but he, re he Facebooked about you, so I thought it was a very so, proud moment. So well, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, Christopher, what brought you to making this movie? Was it because you? it's called Oklahoma Breakdown? And, mm -hmm. and, and give everyone a little bit of a de uh, what it's about. So, you know that song, Oklahoma mm -hmm. Breakdown? Oklahoma Breakdown. Uh, Stoney LaRue took it to number one. But a lot of people don't know who wrote that song. Uh, a lot of people here know who wrote that song. But my first thought when I started doing this was I need to... People need to know about Mike Hosty. And people need to know his story. And I'm like, well, one of the things that he did, you know, if you're looking at it from a 30,000 foot view, is he wrote that song. And, you know, it, it just kind of took a life of its own, if we talk about it in the movie. But um, that's kind of the first thing is, like, why isn't this guy big? And I remember, I remember coming into town for the 2011 uh, Western Conference Finals. Covering, I was covering the Dallas Mavericks for Fox Sports. And we had an off day between games three and four. And uh, so I took, a, you know, a bunch of Dallas people down to... Norman to watch him and that was one of the first things some of the guys were asking were like would this appeal to the masses and I'm like immediately yes but you know the masses don't know en enough about him and he doesn't really get out of Oklahoma and that's part of the backdrop of the story is you know maybe that's maybe there's a, another reason why he's not big not just because he's not good enough but there's a family tie to that. If you've been hanging out in bars in Oklahoma City for any length of time, I moved here in 1994, so live local music and bars is just one of my favorite things. I mean, his name has been associated with duos and trios and just Mike Hosty. I mean, if you haven't seen him, you probably haven't been going out and hanging out and seeing live music for a long time. Because as, as far as I remember, he's always been out there playing and he was always accessible. And every time you go, you're going to see a great show. But I had no idea about the, the Oklahoma breakdown thing. I didn't even know that aspect of it. When did you find out about that he wrote that song? When Curtis started talking about, I was like, what's the name of the thing? I was like, why is it Oklahoma Breakdown? Because I know that song from Stoney. Yeah, and that's you're, it's like really kind of the core audience that I'm going after when I started making this. I'm like, I know that there's people that are going to see the title of this film that know who Stoney LaRue is and mm -hmm. know, or know, who that, know that song. They've been at parties, you know, drinking by the river, whatever it is. You know, it, it, when I went to... Uh, uh, Stephenville to go shoot this it was a Red Dirt Festival. Stephenville, Texas. Stephenville, Texas. Yeah, and uh, they told me, "Hey, you got to come down there and see Stony play this song there." And so I got there, and Stony's like, "What are you doing here?" I was like, "I'm getting here to get you to play that song." And by the end of it, I mean, there was twenty thousand people that knew every single lyric of that song. They were all singing it, and I remember getting chills thinking, oh, "This is 
there's a reason that I did this film. And that was the moment where I knew this could be something, you know, special. And listen, I know people, um, if it, a lot of people listening that either went to school at OSU or at OU or didn't go to school but just go to bars or hung around for the last <laughs> couple of decades, they, they've heard the name Mike Hossie, even if they haven't seen him, but they know the name. So I think it's, uh, it's a really cool way to introduce him and to reintroduce him to a lot of people. We were out in Phoenix for the world premiere and it was amazing the response people that had no idea who he was that came up afterwards and started talking to him and to you and they're like why why haven't we heard of this guy and they're like we want to come to norman we want to go to the deli and see him play like they they were they were wanting to really um get more involved in his music yeah like, and there was a guy from canada who actually was just like He's like, man, this is a really special, you know, just people, random people who knew nothing about my costume. That was the most special thing was uh, at the premiere was just these people who knew nothing about the story and didn't know who my costume was. They just thought maybe the image looked interesting and the story sounded interesting when they read it on the postcard that I brought. And uh, the looks in their eyes when he stood up uh, introduced him and, hey, when, and, you know, at the film's done, it's, you know, they said, hey, you want to introduce Mike? I said, sure. And I, when I, when I introduced him. Like, the electricity was crazy. It was like, wow, he's a rock star right now. That they, had to make you feel insanely, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what the word is, that that many people appreciated your storytelling. Because that's what you did. It was your it's storytelling. It's got to be gratifying. A, a project that you started. You had an idea. Now, just let me ask you about the finished product. When you're sitting down, you're making notes on a legal pad or whatever it was, just kind of like banging out some ideas. Is the finished product anything even close to what you thought about in the very beginning? No. I, I, I was, I was going to say that's probably almost always the case. Not at all. And yes, it was incredibly gratifying for uh, Phil. I was like, you know, I, where, I where I started out thinking it would be maybe a 10 to 15 minute thing. Yeah. Kept, kept going. And when I told you I was, you know, sitting behind uh, Stoney LaRue, standing behind Stoney LaRue, Stoney LaRue with all those people like just cheering every lyric to that song. Um you know, then it was like, okay, now we can get probably 45 minutes out of this thing. There's enough storytelling. Well, then I started talking to him about his family. And that's when the, you know, I had a real, a real story, you know. There's, you had a movie. I had a movie, yeah. And and I didn't know it was going to turn out to be that way. And it, and I've done a lot of, <laughs> done a lot of storytelling in my time, but I've never told one for 91 minutes. And that was very challenging. I did a, I worked on a, a Dirk documentary uh, with Fox where I... Uh, Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah, Dirk yeah. Nowitzki. I'm sure everybody here knows about Dirk, if they're yeah. Thunder fans and they're listening to this station. Uh, but I was uh, very fortunate to go to Germany and shoot a documentary Oh wow! about Dirk. Uh, but I was, you know, I wasn't the director of it. I wasn't calling all the shots. I was very helpful in the, in the process and a big part of it. Um, but that was only 44 minutes, I think double that <laughs> and now we got a, a a movie that's you know that i'm having to to, to sell well it's double that well, plus yeah, it's you it's just you carrie i mean it, it, five years you worked on this project i mean i've, I've seen all the ups and downs by yourself yeah. shot edited wrote directed it, all the stuff every ounce of it basically except for uh just a you know i had a i hired a composer Right. And uh, and I had to, you know, go through some animation steps with... While uh, working, covering sports, covering the Mavericks, or Rangers, or college he, football, or whatever, Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, that was yeah, a hard... I, go ahead. I, I think that's important for people that don't know. Like, uh, Christopher uh, worked for Fox Sports for a long time, uh, you know, shooting games and being a videographer and, and storytelling. <laughs> Great callback. He was, yeah. Thanks. You were there. That was I you. Know. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had I was to just as bad as you, Carrie. <laughs> yeah, Christopher was standing there. You were interviewing JD, right? At the JD time. Runnels, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, you got that nice shot of me. Yeah. I think it's still my Twitter profile right now. I can still uh, see the methed out uh, Red Raider fan standing oh over the ledge God. and yelling at us. <laughs> Didn't the guy look exactly like Hank Hill in real life? <laughs> So yeah, I, yeah, some concoction. If you play that, no, but, but, that audio, but like, you'll hear how frustrated you were. I could hear your. I voice. think you aren't you the one who yelled "shut the bleep up." Oh yeah, that's me. Too. No, that was Mike Jones. I, I yelled yelling, something in the there. Yeah, I definitely yeah. yelled "shut up." I'm sorry, Carrie. Let's not get off track. I appreciate where you're going with this. No, so, no, but but I'm curious. So you know, you have part of your life, and you say you. I mean, Curtis has been telling me about you know you've been working on this since the beginning, and so it's like I knew about it. But I'm curious, like, when you go to the Arizona Film Festival uh, and you have the Q&A uh, and people are referring to you as the director and people are starting to interview you as the director of a film, like, 
How mind blowing was that? That knowing that you put all this work into it, and, and did you ever really think of yourself as a director until that point? Uh, as I started getting down, you know, to the last you know year or so, when I knew I had something special, then I did. Yeah, um, you know, just never really thought I'd be in that role. Uh, it was very surreal being in Phoenix and standing up there and doing a Q and A. I'd, I'd envisioned that as it got closer when I when I thought it was worth telling and sharing um, beyond just maybe putting it on YouTube or something. But when I started di digging into the, you know, the film festival process and, you know, you go, I volunteered at a film festival last year that got my head right with it and, uh, seeing, you know, directors up there with Q and a, that was, uh, you know, kind of got me, got my head right for it, but yeah, no, very surreal. And, uh, I just seeing, you know, there with my brother and there with my girlfriend and, and up there with Mike Hosty and there's, you know, a, a room full of people asking me questions about this thing I've been working on by myself for five years, uh, yeah, r truly surreal, and then and then this thing that the Dead Center Film Festival. That's this is, this is another is level. This is the one that you wanted all along. Yes. because it's if you're not in this costly, one, what's it's the Oklahoma point? Oklahoma you know? breakdown, right? Yeah, it, this was a very make or break situation for me uh, for a lot of reasons I can't get into, but uh, this was very big for me, and uh, and and, to, and I think you know for Mike, honestly, it's 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 special for him. It's it's sort of validation that he's not taken for granted here. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have you stick around, but first we have a, a couple of pairs of tickets to give away to the film festival. Yes, to, and to see your movie. And his movie will show at three o'clock Sunday at the Harkins Bricktown. And if you, either can buy an all all pass for all the movies or walk up that day and get them right and get them for ten dollars if you're there uh, twenty minutes before, or you can. Call in and get an answer to a trivia question. We All right. Some tickets. 900 WWLS is the phone number, but what is the trivia question? So if you've lived in Oklahoma long enough, you know about the weather and you know about storm shelters. Well, Mike Hossie has a song about a storm shelter, and it's this thing that you get into, and it's not called a storm shelter. It's called something else, and if you look it up in the Urban Dictionary, you should be able to figure this out. <laughs> But who can do it first? What's All the right. name of that song? I like it. Four or uh, nine hundred WWLS. You couldn't have made that easier. <laughs> nine hundred WWLS. <laughs> if you know the answer, and you kind of should, uh, you should probably call right now, and then we'll have more with Curtis Fitzpatrick's brother, well, I, I Christopher think he's got Fitzpatrick. Other obligations right oh, now. Oh, really? He can't stick around. You can't stick around. You got other obligations. You might be able to push it back. We'll talk to him in a break. We'll see yeah, if we yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. We can. You can minutes. do anything for us. You're family you got now. That's crazy. You're family. All right. We are the Morning Animals. Call now.